If you're looking to build a forever family home that delivers on energy, thermal comfort, and longevity in terms of the build, then Passive House is the way to go. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the overall approach we do here because of the multiple, multiple variables that come with a custom home. Welcome back guys, another video where we're here on site with our passive house in terms of what it takes to build one of these. Today's topic is about the holistic approach before you engage anyone. So what I've got here is a matrix. In that matrix, we've got the left-hand side, which is design, pre-construction, construction, and handover. At the top, we have approvals and finishes. And on the right-hand side, we've got the budget and the brief. All those elements play together. None of them are more important than the other. The catch here is they are all important and they all need to be juggled equally. Now, how do you juggle them all? It depends on the professional that is going to be in the space. What I mean by that, if you're building an architecturally finished home, then the juggling will be in perspective to their architectural drive. But because we're a passive house specialist, the way we are going to be juggling all this information is with the passive house principles and elements. And on top of all of that is the budget. As long as those two areas are met, you are pretty much then on the right path moving forward. So what happens between design and approvals? In design and approvals, you've got the survey, the certificate 10.7 and the regulation bodies, depending on if you're going CDC or DA pathways. And on top of that, you've got other special reports that need to be factored in. So depending on your site, you might be heritage listed site. That means you need a heritage consultant to identify what it is. If you are flood impacted, then you'd need the flood results and certificates that would allow you to know where your site slab levels are. Now, these are just high level and not every bit of detail because otherwise we'll sit here for hours going through it. Moving forward, is finishes in the design stage. You need to have an idea of the overall finishes because that integrates with, we need to think in advance, how's that going to impact the passive house and how's that going to impact pricing. So once we have the finishes and the key elements are your kitchen, your stairs, windows and doors, and the facade finishes in terms of style, because that all needs to integrate well right at the beginning. And because of all those elements, you put them all in, you mix it all up with respect to the overarching principle of Passive House and your budget, then you end up with what's called a custom home, the Passive House principles within your expected budgeting. Then once we progress the job, we, we enter pre-construction. In pre-construction, in the approval section, we start to uh, execute the engineering plans. That's your structural and your hydraulic will start to do the construction plans. The construction plans are your architectural plans and the design, but then you start to detail every bit of element in terms of the elevations, the bathrooms, and you're integrating every bit of uh, specification into the plans because once those plans get stamped approved, the idea is not to make any changes to them to ensure the project delivers on a fixed price and on time. Then the certifier needs to be engaged as well as all the council fees. These are only high level. It's not every single element in here. Moving forward for in pre-construction, we have to go and start working on all the finishes and detailing every bit of finish in here. In here, you can spend more money, you can spend less money. Uh, it really depends to your taste and style. Usually work mm. with a dedicated designer that will take you through and go through every element of the house. Then from there, your budget and brief are still important to this stage. So like I said before, it's a juggling art that will keep juggling. Once these elements are all locked in and decided, you move to what's called construction. In construction, you will have all these construction packs without going into too much details, basically documentation, documentation, documentation. And this is what makes or breaks a home, a residential build, 
built to your expectations on budget and on time. The documentations are very important. This is where every bit of selection gets detailed, that gets integrated into the architectural construction plans, uh, the engineers, the consultants, everyone's sort of been through it, the team, yourself, um, everything is detailed. Once it's all signed off, then you move on to construction. So the idea in construction, the team knows to follow in approvals, the NCC, what's called the National Construction Code of Standards, the contract and the approval requirements. So if you're going to DA, they usually have specific requirements that are imposed on the build. So the team knows what to follow. And moving from there, you move on to the finishes. The finishes are the specification documents, what the team is going to be purchasing, installing, and to what standards they're going to be finishing the house. So this is all very, very important because that really impacts the whole flow of the job. And then the right hand side that moves, it's no longer a budget and a brief. We move to what's called a fixed price and a fixed scope. So the idea is that we're going to be executing all these works for that X amount of money. And we're also going to deliver it at, within that date. So those elements are now fixed and they are no longer a risk. Uh, they are no longer a risk to, and I have a friend here right behind me, uh, to your project. So the idea is, now this might sound quite a lot and what makes this a lot easier for us, it's because of our specialty. Once you're a specialist, so once you engage a specific specialist that delivers, they potentially weed out a lot of ideas that would not work or ideas that might sound great at design stage, but then will not work at construction stage because of anything, you know, it could be cost related or it could be the passive house principles related where, you know, we're not getting the air tightness that we need. So there is more to it than what, what I've got here on this matrix, but this is to really give you the holistic approach and your goals. And it's very, very important. What is the final goal that you're trying to achieve? Like I said earlier on in this video, if you're trying to achieve the best of the best in terms of energy, thermal comfort on longevity, which is the passive house standards, this is an approach what we found has worked with most of our builds and it's working for us moving into our future builds and like the site here right behind me with all its complexities. Then you move to what's called a handover. This is where you are completing the job. You have all the certificates under approvals. You have the occupation certificate. You have, uh, this is where we start to completing the passive house certification. And then we move to your finishes, which is handing you the your forever home to your liking, to your finishes and a successful build on time. So. Hopefully that video has been beneficial. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. It just helped to let YouTube know that we're doing worthwhile content and hopefully we'll see you on the next video. That's it for me for now. See you on the next one.